Hello, my name's Leanne McGlynn, and I'm here with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Welcome to McGlynn Institute Neonatal's Procedural Skills Series, where we discuss the iGel Superglottic Airway. The eighth edition of NRP recommends the use of a supraglottic airway in neonatal resuscitation when an advanced airway is needed. In other words, it can be the A in Mr. Sopa. This advanced airway can be easily placed by any trained healthcare provider with a high incidence of success and a low rate of complications. Can be helpful in those patients with difficult airways, such as Pierre Robin or subglottic stenosis, or if the provider is uncomfortable or unsuccessful with neonatal endotracheal intubation. A supraglottic airway can also be a mechanism for instilling epinephrine or even surfactant. In fact, studies have also revealed that it can reduce the incidence of needing intubation if used immediately upon determining the need for positive pressure. In other words, bypass the use of a face mask and go directly to a supraglottic airway. The specific supraglottic airway I will demonstrate today is the neonatal eye gel. The eye gel is manufactured by Intersurgical and is made from a medical grade thermoplastic elastomer. The shape, softness, and contours accurately mirror the perilaryngeal anatomy, creating an anatomical seal of pharyngeal, laryngeal, and perilaryngeal structures while avoiding compression trauma. The eye gel is designed to work in harmony with the patient's anatomy, therefore significantly reducing or eliminating compression and or displacement trauma. The eye gel's innovative design enables the device to provide an airtight seal without requiring any extra syringe or steps to inflate or deflate a cuff mechanism. In fact, recent studies show that the eye gel size 1 is an effective supraglottic airway device for use in small infants and neonates in comparison with normal LMAs. The eye gel is quicker to insert and provides better initial airway quality. The neonatal eye gel has a 15 millimeter connector that can connect to a positive pressure devices such as BVMs, flow inflating bags, T-piece connectors, as well as vent circuits and CO2 detectors. It also has a buccal cavity stabilizer that has a built-in natural curvature and inherent propensity to adapt its shape to the oropharyngeal curvature of the patient. It is anatomically widened and concave to eliminate the potential for rotation, thereby reducing the risk of malposition. It also provides vertical strength to aid in insertion. Additionally, the neonatal eye gel has an integral bite block. This function is provided by the distal below the wing part of the connector, which runs through the center of the proximal part of the buccal cavity stabilizer. This is to reduce the possibility of airway channel occluding. The junction of the distal tip of the body of the connector is V-shaped, which significantly reduces the risk of kinking. The neonatal eye gel also has an epiglottic rest. This is an artificial epiglottis and a protective ridge to help prevent the epiglottis from folding down or obstructing the distal opening of the airway. The epiglottic ridge at the proximal end of the bowl rests at the base of the tongue, thus keeping the device from moving upwards out of position and the tip from moving out of the upper esophagus. Finally, the neonatal eye gel has a soft, non-inflatable cuff. The eye gel superglottic airway comes in multiple sizes, and the size is typically determined by the patient's weight. The size 1 is for a 2 to 5 kilo patient, where a size 2 is for a 5 to 12 kilo patient. The eye gel has easy visibility of key product information, not only on the packaging, but on the integrated bite block. This information includes the size and recommended weight of that particular eye gel for each patient. 
Each eye gel comes in a sealed package. You should inspect the packaging and ensure that it is not damaged prior to opening. You should open the eye gel package on a flat surface. At that point, carefully inspect the bowl of the device, ensuring the surfaces are smooth. You should discard the device if any of the airway tube or the body of the device looks abnormal or deformed. Remember to always wear gloves, and just before you're ready to insert, open the cage pack and keep the device into the lid of the cage. Do not place the device on a pillow or the patient's chest, and always use the protective cradle or cage pack provided. In addition, do not use unsterile gauze to help in lubricating the device. A proficient user can achieve insertion of the eye gel in less than five seconds. The patient should be in the sniffing position with the neck flexed and the head extended. The operator should be standing at the head of the bed and grasp the eye gel firmly along the integral bite block. You should use the neonate's own secretions for lubrication. The chin should then be gently pressed down before proceeding to insert the eye gel. You then introduce the leading soft tip into the mouth of the patient in a direction towards the hard palate. Glide the device downward and backwards along the hard palate with a continuous but gentle push until a definitive resistance is felt. Sometimes a feel of give way is felt before the end point of resistance is met. This is due to the passage of the bowl of the eye gel through the fossil pillars or pharyngoepiglottic folds. Once it has been established that ventilatory parameters are met, such as good chest rise, increase in heart rate, and improvement in both saturations and patient color, the eye gel should be held in place while the device is secured with tape, as seen here, maxilla to maxilla. Of note, excessive air leak during manual ventilation is primarily due to suboptimal depth of eye gel insertion. As with all supraglottic airways, it is important to ensure the correct size, that lubrication is optimal, that the device is inserted and positioned correctly and regularly checked in order to reduce the potential for nerve damage, tongue numbness, cyanosis, and other potential complications. Now that we have discussed the eye gel supraglottic airway, including its indications, contraindications, preparation and placement, as well as the securement of the device, now it's your turn. Tell us how this video helped you in your actual practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.